Hello one and all, welcome to See Through Glass. Now back in January when I collected my GT3, I assumed I'd spend the rest of the year just doing endless road trips in it. Heck, the week I collected it, I took it straight down to Austria in the snow. A few months later, I took it through Belgium and Luxembourg and across the Nürburgring. After that, we headed down to the south of France. I mean, it was all going so well. But then it quite literally fell apart. Uh, you might remember I got that massive crack across the windscreen. It took forever to replace the glass. And then as I was about to start my next adventure, well, the drive shaft fell off. And that's meant that since May, I haven't done many miles in my car. Luckily, that's all about to change because very early tomorrow morning, I'm heading down to the Eurotunnel to kickstart a 4,000 mile road trip through Europe with my car. And I'm not going alone. This video has been sponsored by Car Vertical, who help you learn the story of your future or current vehicle. You can get a report to avoid bad deals, sell faster, or learn if your vehicle's safe. More information later in the video. Well, this is exciting, isn't it? Mate, it's really early. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not wrong. Uh, good morning. It's just gone 6 a.m. My alarm went off at 4.30 this morning. Uh, but yes, I'm being joined on this trip by Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales in his 992 GT3. And what's quite interesting is whilst these cars are the same, they're actually very different. Uh, my car's a manual, Tony's is an automatic. My car has comfort seats, his has the full buckets. He's got loads of carbon fiber and a roll cage. I I don't. I'm running the standard Pirelli P0s, he's on the Racia P0 courses, etc, etc. And all of these differences are going to be quite fascinating when we make it to our final destination. What is the final destination for this trip? Well, we're heading to Austria, which seems to be this car's second home. I feel like my GT3 has spent more time in Austria than it has done in the UK. Uh, but we're going to the Red Bull Ring for a Pirelli P0 experience, which is essentially a big old track day at the F1 circuit. But that's why I'm so interested by the differences in these cars. It's gonna be fascinating to see how they both operate out on track. I thought you were going to be watching uh, laps of the Red Bull Ring to get, to get your eye in. <laughs> Logan Sargent's put it in the wall. <laughs> Just like you're going to do in a couple of days. Don't be like that. <laughs> As is often the way with these trips, uh, day one is about kind of getting some mileage under the belt. Uh, we just crossed into Belgium and we're on our way to Frankfurt in Germany. It's because tonight we're going to be staying in a, in a pretty cool hotel. Uh, if you remember my adventure to Austria with this car at the start of the year, you might remember that on my way there, I stayed at the Motorworld in Munich and it was amazing. If you like that place, you're probably going to like this place. So yeah, don't go anywhere. Then tomorrow we're going to be taking some back roads from Frankfurt down to Stuttgart because the day after that, we're going to be visiting Porsche HQ. Tony and I are huge Porsche fans. We're out here in our GT3s. We basically had to pass through Stuttgart to get to Austria. So yeah, we thought we'd take our cars home or at least take them back to where they were built. So all of that is to come in this video. So stay tuned. I'm just so happy to be back out in continental Europe in my car. Got Tony in his GT3 behind me. The sun was shining. It's, it's trying to rain now, but I couldn't care less because I'm in such a good mood the next few days are going to be epic. Well everyone, welcome to the B Mine Hotel at the Frankfurt Airport. This is an airport hotel, but as I teased earlier, it's no ordinary airport hotel. As you can see, I've just called down an elevator which I'm about to drive into with my car. You might assume that this elevator is going to take me down into the car park, but no, it's taking me somewhere a little cooler than that. Welcome boys and girls to my room for the night and my balcony. Yep. I don't get what's going on with Germany in these car rooms, but I freaking love them. <laughs> no, 
Now that is what I call a room with a view. So these car lofts cost about 250 euros a night. You can save a little bit of money if you don't want to look over the airport, but I'm a nerd. I wanted to watch the planes take off. I've also got a view of the autobahn so I can do some car spotting. Like I say, I'm a nerd. And actually, as I was just saying in the car a moment ago, I don't know where the Germans got this idea of parking your car in your hotel room or on the balcony outside, but I kind of love it. It's totally mad. I'd say this place isn't quite as, as epic or as fun as Motorworld, where I stayed earlier in the year. Best thing about that place is you step out of your room and you're in Motorworld. There's so much to look at, so much to do. This feels like a more traditional airport or business hotel, just with the added quirk that your car's on the balcony. But the room is huge, this bed feels super comfy, massive bathroom, massive TV. Yeah, it, it's a good place to wrap up day one of this road trip, which means that, well, I can now put my feet up and yeah, spend the rest of the evening just staring at my car on the balcony. I am a loser, aren't I? I'm a loser, but I feel like I embrace it. Just quickly, I need to tell you about Car Vertical, who've helped make this awesome trip possible. You've probably heard me talk about Car Vertical before, or at least heard other automotive YouTubers talk about it, because it's like the ultimate one-stop shop for a super detailed and concise report into your car, car you're looking to buy's history. Now, interesting story. During this trip, off camera, I went to look at a car that I was seriously considering buying. If you want to hear more about it, find out more about it, go listen to my latest episode of my podcast. But when I arrived to see this car, I asked if there was a history file with all the invoices and documentation that had been gathered on this car. Unfortunately, a lot of it was missing. That got me a little bit nervous, raised a bit of a red flag. So I jumped on Car Vertical and generated a report because, well, Car Vertical pulls information from like 900 different sources around the world. It means that you get back this incredibly easy to consume report that covers the mileage history so you can work out if the car's ever been clocked. You can see if the car's ever been in an accident and if it has, maybe there are photos so you can see exactly what that damage has been. Sometimes there's a valuation tool to help you predict kind of value of the car and other kind of significant moments in a car's life. So immediately I could use that to kind of assess whether I wanted to buy the car I'd been to look at. I didn't want to buy it. Again, if you want to find out more, head over to the podcast. But yes, Car Vertical genuinely saved my life in that situation. So, if you want to check out Car Vertical to generate a report on your own car, or maybe a car you're looking to buy, go and use my link in the description now. Huge thanks to them for helping make these adventures possible. As I say, I wouldn't be able to do it without them, so go and show your support for them by going and getting yourself a report. Well, good morning. Welcome to day two. A uh, very good night's sleep at the B-Mine in Frankfurt. Just called the, uh, the elevator to take me uh, back downstairs. There we go, doors have opened. <laughs> it's fun, this. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful day, which is a good thing because our plan today is to do some, uh, well, slightly more spirited driving on the back roads from here down to Stuttgart. So, uh, let me head down to the lower levels, meet up with Tony, we'll crack on, hopefully find some decent roads. neither Tony or I have explored this part of Germany before. So we woke up this morning, put Stuttgart in the sat-nav and then ticked avoid motorways in the route criteria. We're kind of making it up, but so far, so good. The roads have been pretty awesome and pretty quiet. We've really only seen motorbikes. And actually when you see lots of motorbikes, it's usually a good sign. Often means that the roads are good and fairly scenic. I have to say though, it's taken me a little bit of time to get back up to speed in this car. I don't think I've driven the GT3 in anger since Monaco in May and it is just so capable, 
that as I push on, I'm like, oh yeah, no, the brakes are way better than that. And oh, I can carry so much more speed through here. But then you get overly cocky and you brake later and carry more speed and then start to get a little bit wrong. So yeah, it takes a while <laughs> to start to feel really confident but it is just such a fantastic road car, this thing, and so much fun on roads like this. So I'm hoping the rest of today continues to be, well, a German wonderland. More bikers? You got enough cream there, mate? Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> That's fine, mate. Do you want some cake with your cream? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. Because I asked them, like, can you make sure you give me plenty of cream to, for this big cake? Clearly, my yeah. God. Um, I have to say, I'm kind of enjoying the pace of today. We're, we're literally like 30 minutes from Frankfurt. We have not gone that far. We had a pretty lazy morning. We woke up early to watch the Formula One. Didn't leave the hotel till like 10 a.m. Very unlike us. We've come down the road to, it's hard to pronounce this, so bear with me, the Schulkrippener Forest, right next to the Heinrichstahl Forest. And it seems to be the place to come on a Sunday yep. morning for a drive. There's thousands of bikers, like I just mentioned, but there's a GT4 in the car park. Two GT3s. Two. <laughs> One in a really nice green colour. <laughs> One with a smash window. So, mm, I wasn't going to mention that because yeah, I, also, I also lost my drone. <laughs> So, I was trying to gloss over and be like, things are great, but actually, yeah, Tony smashed the glass in his car and I've lost my drone, yep. so we're eating our emotions. That's actually what's happening. That's the truth behind YouTube. Tony's always here just to call it as it is, really. I don't know what is going on. There seems to be some kind of tractor convention. Look at this. Steam-powered. This is amazing. I wonder if any of them are Porsches. Because obviously Porsche made a tractor, diesel tractor. Wow! What have we stumbled upon? <laughs> now, I've got to be honest, um, the roads from Frankfurt down here towards Stuttgart, they, they haven't been fantastic. I think we peaked this morning. It's all been kind of busy through lots of towns. Still loads of bikers around. And I know I said that was a good thing, but actually, I said that maybe there's too many bikers. It's becoming a little sketchy. But you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Today was a bit of an experiment. We didn't really know what to expect. We just didn't want to sit on the motorway all day. And there have been some, some good moments. We have been able to open up the cars. And I don't think either of us are stressed because we've got plenty of opportunities over the next five or six days to, yeah, really wind out these cars. We're going some of my favorite roads in Austria. So it is what it is. We've still got a couple of hours to go till we get to our hotel. So you never know, we might stumble across something else. Nothing that's going to be a parade of old tractors, though. Look, it must be some kind of festival. There's tons of people. I'm going to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like a classic car meet. Ah, Tony is going to hate me. We're going. <laughs> yep. We're going. <laughs> I don't know where we are or what is going on. We've come to a classic car meet, Tony. But I can't see any classic car. All I see is old trucks. There's a Saab Turbo right behind us. Well, that's obviously what people drive in Germany. I don't think it's a classic car show. No, look at this old Mercedes. What that? That's right up your street. Oh, actually. That's yeah. pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Split rims and all. What's a, what, that's an E34, E30, E20. E30, E30, E30. E30. It's oh, nice, nice though. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Oh look, you love your old Mercedes. Look at that, that's right up your street. That's right up my street, that's a lovely colour. I prefer that one. Do you? You like a Rover? No. <laughs> look at this old Mark Limo. Six Pura Selton. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty baller little car, isn't it? Did you just read that sign out? Yeah. What does it say? Well, six something seats. Six two, two, uh, two, I don't know, mate.
Well, boys and girls, look at this. Good morning and welcome to Stuttgart and welcome to the home of Porsche. We made it. Uh, our drive after that random local car meet yesterday was delightful, very scenic. We had a beautiful, glorious sunset. We got to our hotel and had a nice night of rest and then woke up like kids on Christmas day. <laughs> Early this morning, Tony and I were just buzzing to arrive here. Forgive the slightly awkward lighting. We are currently under the shade of the amazing Porsche Museum. The sun is shining upon the factory behind us. And yes, we've brought our two cars home some 12 months ago, I guess. Our cars would have rolled out of the gates behind us for its final quality checks and then loaded up onto a, a truck and a, or a container and made their way across the UK and into our hands. So it feels super cool to bring the cars here right now. Uh, we've got an awesome morning ahead of us. There's some Corrado or something, gave it absolute uh, full beans away from the light. Uh, but we're going to go into the museum to have a quick look around. We're going to be going into a sort of storage warehouse that I've always wanted to visit when I come here. And we're just going to embrace being the home of the brand that Tony and I both love so much. I mean, and just look at that. As I say, I know the lighting's not perfect, but look at that scene. Now, this must have been my third or fourth visit to the Porsche Museum, but I never find it any less impressive. I love this place, and it's a must visit if you're doing a road trip through Stuttgart or the south of Germany. Our tour guide for the day was the awesome Benny from Porsche, who's been in a number of my videos before. He's a legend, but also a fountain of knowledge when it comes to the world of Porsche, so the perfect person to educate Tony, who we all know isn't necessarily a major fan of anything pre-2009. Uh, but we had an awesome tour of the 75th anniversary exhibition at the museum but then we were gagging to get down to the storage or warehouse facility which I'd always heard about but never been lucky enough to visit. Oh that's bringing back some memories isn't it? Inspiration mate that was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, you actually. so Tony had a GT3 RS that he wrapped yeah. in this Seven. livery. Yeah. So and people literally used it when I used to go on track. They literally, some people thought it was the cup car. The cup car. Because because it, it was going so fast, huh? <laughs> so it literally looked. It was basically identical. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Look at this though. This I was always obsessed with. There's one of these in the museum though. Uh, well, there was that was the design study. Right. This is an RSR sort of study or concept. But why with, the, they... with the flywheel. Oh. Uh, <laughs> why have they put them cameras as mirrors and the production car didn't make it? Um, due to the fact that they were not allowed in every country. Uh, uh, registration for safety Sa reasons. Something so. There, there were still no um, no um, laws who could allow that back then. So now you can do that, but back then it was too early. You that, literally don't know where to look. D don't know where to like start, right? There's, just, start. there's so yeah. much. To what, what, what I always love to point out is that this is the mother and father of bolt on fender cars, who became quite common with RWB and all those other ah. things. But we did it decades ago as well. So. Okay, yeah, look how, <laughs> look how wide that is. Whoa. Okay, which way do we go? Because it's too exciting. Uh, let's go that way. Okay, we'll start over yeah, here. Because, because the, the, the nice stuff's in there. <laughs> this is all the crack in there. No, don't <laughs> <laughs> What about that? You're going to like that. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh, black. Come on, that's got to be up the street. They're all carbon. What am I yeah. even on about? Both. There's the, the pink pig sister car, right? That looks like an actual yeah. Le Mans. Has yeah. that not been washed since Le Mans? Not been washed and I think it has like a very slight clear coat. Okay, to maintain the... Mat, yeah, to keep the dirt. Oh. Cool, isn't it? That's super cool, yeah. dude. I mean, that's insane when you see it with the exposed carbon. See, I'm a big fan of this 996 generation race car. It's actually one of the loudest cars we have in the collection. Really? It's super loud. Wow. Dude, look at this. It goes on for miles. <laughs> This is From outside, it doesn't look that big. No, no, I was like, oh, we've probably, we've probably been brought to the small storage, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that, that is the main storage, especially the cars which are registered and drivable yeah. are parked here. Okay. So that's more or less the driving fleet in that row. Sure. Um, then you have all those race cars placed over there to have them, yeah, it's easier to handle them. Um, as soon as they are close to the exit yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or, or um, entrance, yeah, because you have to pull them. We have stringos, little machines, they go under the car and you just pull the pull car out. out, but you can't do that with race cars, they're too low. Mm -hmm. okay. So they have to be pulled 
two cars that I want to point out before we move on. Firstly, this 356 with like a, like a teak surfboard in the passenger seat, which I'm <laughs> obsessed with. Firstly, and then look at this. Is that an oak green metallic car? That it must be close enough, but with the seats as well. <gasps> These grades are much faster than your grade. Well, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> What's that with the Oslo blue esque? Let's have a look. <gasps> <gasps> oh, I could be about to spend lots of money. What is it? What is it? No, it's a turbo. S. But what a colour. What a colour. Exclusive. What is it? 20 years. Oh, it's a China edition. Well done, China. You've picked a great colour, lads. You like so, that? Yeah, so this is literally been made for the for here, for storage. It's not uh, this. That it's just a, it's mad, isn't it? Brand new car. It's a pre-production car. Yeah. Pre-production yeah, pre car. You can't sell them, so we, we store them. Just store them, yeah. <gasps> I can see something that I really want to see over there. What? The career, the, the official Drive the World Carrera T. Yes. With, with the Civis. Yeah. This is a story, mate. We'll, we'll save it once we get there. Let's not skip ahead, yeah. <laughs> Let me just cover it. With yeah. You. Oh, very nice as well. Come on. It's a super nice color, it's right? Nice, yeah. I think that's Oslo Boo, isn't it? It's something like that. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, Benny. <laughs> China, blue. China blue. There we go. That makes more sense. Is that Gen 1 GT3 RS? Yeah. Or GT3? A, a very special one. Yeah, see. So you can spot the modern stuff, spot, can't you? Spot yeah, it yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, look at the interior. <gasps> With red stitching. Wow. And that is a special color if you look at that red which is the normal guards red this is not guards but also a common red color it's polo red i think okay. that is absolute red wow L looks a little bit like lava orange but a bit darker yeah it's like a, yeah mixture of orange and red yeah yeah, yeah that's super cool that. could you pts this color yes I think it's PTS Plus. <laughs> <laughs> That's super nice, because that, that is the car that I think we were talking about is the modern interpretation of what we saw yes. in the workshop, right? Yes. So That's, that's got the hands tooth with the wooden steering wheel, then the silver mirrors, loads of nice little touches on that Although for sure. Also those, those um, oh, yeah. red rings were painted silver Okay. Um, in, in respect of the chrome trim of the early 911s. Lovely idea. <laughs> so there is so much to look at and freak out about. Wait, we here. can't. We're not going by two o'clock. No, no we're supposed to leave it to. That's just not going to happen, just is leave it? Me here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two o'clock by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Two o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, there is a lot of special cars in here. Some of them are first off, last off, uh, or pre-owned by um, significant people and stuff, or most. Yeah, we don't buy from VIPs or something like that cars, sure. but some of them were driven or were used by okay. someone special or a former engineer or something like that. Hey. Yeah. Great one. Look quite smart. Works very well in the way. It's what turbo is exclusive the series. The other way around. That is Speedster. Um, that, I was going to say it must be a concept because it has the fuel filler in the yeah. center and then the special yeah. wing mirrors. And a lot of this ended up being the Heritage Design Pack, didn't it? Which Correct. was the, but it does look a bit different. It almost looks like the bulk is lower as well. The actual, this element almost looks lower, but maybe I got that wrong. Right, <laughs> come on, let's keep going. Let's keep shopping, Tony. Yeah, come on. We're going to end up buying about 17 Porsches I mean, after this trip, aren't we? Money, oh yeah. my you God, you could spend some money. some money. Well, you've missed it because you don't really care, but I'm all over this. That's that 25, 25 anniversary Boxster. Boxster. Oh, you keep so I keep banging them. on about them because what a car. Can we sneak through here? Is there enough room yeah. to sneak through? Come on. I want to go and show Tony this original Drive the World Carrera T. So when I obviously got my car and I'd done my plan for Drive the World and I wanted it to be this kind of heritage rally inspired look and feel, yeah. about a month later or a few weeks later, Porsche did this big trip to help like, I, guess, I don't know what it was for the Monte actually. Carlo. It was the Monte Carlo Rally and look what turns up, a Carrera T with Sibby's on the front, spotlights on the front, to do the same thing and basically celebrate heritage rallying 911s, etc. This is what inspired you to... Well, it was almost weirdly a similar thought, because my original car was that Frisco 911 was my inspiration yeah, that yeah. I was... So, it just was a weird coincidence that 
me and then Porsche themselves did sibbies on the front of a Carrera T. They obviously didn't drill holes in the bumpers like I did, or maybe they did actually, to be fair, yes, but they did. they did, okay. <laughs> but he's like, yes, yes they did. We just drilled holes differently, so. Uh, this is a proper Carrera T, this is a manual and you have an auto. I'm not going to disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, but you as someone who hates manuals. <laughs> Yeah but, yeah, but I've only said it because you got the wrong way round. Yeah, no, fair enough. <laughs> I normally agree with you. Anyway, to wind me up, <laughs> yeah, essentially. You have to look inside the car. Because there's something more special inside? Yeah, there's seats in that one. Well, we've yeah, got a... Stitching in the seats. Wow, okay, red stitching on the seats, the manual. Oh, 1968 on the headrest. Yes. That's what you're trying to point out to and me. So... Check the, check the console. Oh, the word navigation oh, system oh. sits. Okay, so this is way more special than I realised at the time. So I thought you literally just stuck the Sibbies on the front, but this is a, essentially a celebration of what, a 1968 yeah. 911T rally car? Yeah, because wow. uh, Vic Elford, uh, he used to win the first Rally Monte Carlo for Porsche in a 911T 1968. Okay. And a couple of years ago, we did a tribute to trip to that with Vic, who died, who passed away last year, sadly. And um, as the 1968T, uh, the original car, is long gone, nobody knows where it is, and we didn't have a car like that, or a matching type of, in our collection. Back then we had the idea to put that history onto a 991 Carrera T, okay. to combine the, the original car and some modern interpretations of it. And it was a typical Porsche project, we had just a little idea with some little details, um, but then it went a little bit, um, yeah, crazy. You went overboard. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the headlights and everything that was designed by our designers and developers, just as a yeah, little additional fun job, project, a yeah. fun project, and yeah, then it, yeah, turned out to become a bigger thing. Very cool. And there is an orig original Vic Alfred signature on the roof as well, so. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so I, I, un I underestimated how special that is, but still cool given my story with a Sibid Carrera T. Um, that's, that's awesome to see. Tony, you just walked off, you got bored of that topic, so what, you, what have you no, found? No, 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 I, I, did, I, I didn't walk off it, I'm just trying just to distract embrace it. it all. What Look. have you seen? Sport, Sport classic, classic. Yeah, very nice. Everybody's darling. Yeah, well, not mine. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I, I mean, I'm not going to swear on camera, but oh, not really a bit of me, really, to be honest. Another overhyped Porsche. No, but this one was inherently more unique and special at the time. Maybe at the time, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I actually, this month makes more sense than the newer car, the 992. I can't stand that new one. I'm going to cut you off and move on. So uh, <laughs> let's come around because I can tell this next alleyway is the one that basically, basically yeah, you've come to see this. Like, <gasps> but firstly, look at that. So I'm going to get confused now. Is it Ruby Star, Ruby Stone, Ruby Glam, Ruby whatever? Really Ruby Nice. <laughs> the very nice Ruby Nice. Look at th oh, So this is literally GT Car Alley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's gone. We've lost him. You're going to have to pick one to drive away in, Tony. We also call it the spoiler section. The spoiler section, yeah. okay. Because usually only cars with spoilers are allowed to park here with... Interesting. Little, uh, Just leave me here, boys. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, mate. Have fun. Bye. There is a GT3 Touring there as well without That's, spoiler. Okay. He's, he's fine. He's okay. He's, he's allowed in. Okay. Wow. Super cool. That's a really nice color. What is that? Is that, um... That's your generation, no? Yeah, it is my generation, but it just looks... It's like a voodoo blue, or yeah, I don't know. It, so I mean, unique. I've seen the colour before, but it just looks nice in here. I don't know. It just looks super nice, because it really pops out, huh? Oh, look at that green one. That oh, yeah, so that's a really nice green at the back, GT2 RS. What's this? It must have been a... Was this a... Full electric boxer. Full electric... This one here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Benny, I wasn't looking at that one. Ah, sorry. <laughs> it's got E in Boxster E. I was looking at the cool camoed one behind it. I mean, f fair play. Great of you to point out, but you know. <laughs> we're, we're here for the loud stuff, Benny. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler section. Spoiler section, there we go, because it's got a spoiler at the back. <laughs> this is a GC4 cut car. Club uh, Sport. Yeah, Club Sport. Yeah. Club Sport, yeah. Yeah. Club Sport test, wow. I think. Wow. Yeah. This is the best place I've ever been. <laughs> 
Are you having yeah. a good time? Yes. Yes, you're loving life, aren't you? Yeah, for someone who hates cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the fact that both of us are so excited, but about completely different cars. <gasps> now, you've got to hear the story of that ML. We'll, oh. get, we'll get Benny to come and talk about that in a second. Oh, uh, do you know what? I wouldn't. I, if you hadn't pointed it out, I just would have. You would have walked straight past walked it. Straight past it. I'm trying. I think it was a development something, but we'll find out. I think they took it on an event, and it's. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah, the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. But look down here, mate. So, one, two, three, four, five, five nine eighteen. Um, um, these, these aren't these aren't customs cars. These are no, no, no. These are Porsche aren't factory or museum cars. That will be used for all different events. Is it five? What's the one right at the back? Is that a six or not? I think that is a six, isn't it? Right at the back. It's just one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But then look at all this other stuff that's like undercover. A lot of this will be like weird prototype stuff. There's, a, there's another one outside as well. There's seven. Seven. There's seven nine eighteen here. Come on, so we can make a low ball offer, mate. <laughs> Surely they want to get one off their hands. Does that? Does these seven come off the nine hundred eighteen? You have to ask Benny. Don't ask me. Look at all this stuff. These are all the cutaways. Look at look at that. That must be a development car because look at the exhausts and yeah. stuff. Looks like it's got an M exhaust on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I love this. The <laughs> Cayenne Tran Trans Siberia. This is a bit of my bit bit up my street. Oh, look at the back of it. So that must be a that must have been a development car or something. Yeah, that went off to do testing to figure out somewhere. gone absolutely flat out do you know the 918s that are all here there's like seven of them here that are obviously yeah it's Porsche half cars. of the number we have so you've got 14 or 15 yeah. does that are, are they additional cars to the 918 yes. that they made yes right so they don't count because they're never yeah. going to be sold they don't count they are all uh zero, triple zeros or four zeros uh, yeah. so yeah. they're not they're not they're not numbered no they're not fair yeah and what was the story with the ML? Um, the, the M class has, or ML. Um, <laughs> I get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, BMW uh, come after you. The, yeah. the, the ML uh, is a project with a very special Brabus engine with a lot of horsepower, and that was a development test mule during the Cayenne That's final what I thought, stage. Yeah. Especially when it comes to tires and, and loudness and so on, so they tested a lot. Okay. Which you often see manufacturers, by the way, like, you know, Ferrari, you'll see a GT3 RS come out of yes. there. Or yeah. the Lambo. Yes. They, they buy get, the competition. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. They, they like yeah. to compare it's them to benchmark sure. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool, isn't it? Super cool, mate. It's unbelievable in here. Have you found any... Okay, apart from the 918s, which car would you drive away today? No, because you can't say apart from. This yeah. It's the 918s. Okay, fine. That's it. Any particular 918? Any of them. The Any of them. <laughs> <laughs> the visor, one that works. <laughs> one that works. Yeah. One that works. Wow. One that works. Porsche HQ and our adventures continue. What an epic morning it was. I'm so glad we made that stop. Benny was an impeccable host. So cool getting to look around that storage facility once the cameras turned off. We did actually do a podcast, so head over to the Behind the Glass YouTube channel to check that out. But also Benny told us lots of, of secrets, showed us some cars that we couldn't show on camera. And yeah, not that we needed to drink any more Porsche Kool-Aid, but Tony and I definitely did. <laughs> We love the brand even more than ever. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. And stay subscribed because yes, lots more to come from this GT3 trip through Europe.